You think you can just walk away? You owe us, Hazel. Miriam's voice is a venomous whisper as she corners me in the hospital corridor. I press my back against the cold wall, heart pounding. The antiseptic smell of the hospital burns my nostrils as I struggle to find words. I don't owe you anything. I manage, my voice shakier than I'd like. Miriam's eyes narrow, her perfectly manicured nails digging into my arm. Everything you have is because of this family. Don't you dare forget that. A nurse pushes a cart past us, eyeing our tense standoff with concern. I use the moment to slip away from Miriam's grasp, hurrying down the hallway towards Callum's room. My name is Hazel, and 12 hours ago, I thought I had the perfect life. Now, I'm not sure what I have anymore. I pause outside Callum's door, steadying myself. Through the small window, I can see him lying there, bandaged and bruised. My husband, the man I thought I knew. Taking a deep breath, I push open the door. Callum's eyes flutter open at the sound, a weak smile spreading across his face. Hazel, he croaks. You're here. I force a smile, moving to his bedside. Of course I'm here. How are you feeling? He reaches for my hand, and I let him take it, ignoring the way my skin crawls at his touch. Better now that you're here. I'm so sorry, love. I never meant for any of this to happen. I swallow hard, fighting back the urge to scream. Does he mean the accident or everything else? Callum, I start my voice low. We need to talk about. The door swings open and Edgar shuffles in, his weathered face creased with concern. How's our boy doing? He asks, patting Callum's leg. I step back, letting father and son have their moment. As I watch them, my mind drifts to last night, to the moment everything changed. I'd been waiting up for Callum, as I often did these days. His late nights at the office had become more frequent, and a nagging doubt had taken root in my chest. When his phone buzzed on the coffee table, I told myself I wouldn't look. I told myself to trust him, but I looked. The message preview was brief, but it was enough. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, baby. Last night was amazing. Fiona. In that moment, my world shattered. Now, standing in this sterile hospital room, I feel like I'm watching a play unfold. Callum, the doting husband. Edgar, the concerned father. And me, the loving wife, keeping it all together. But it's all a lie. Hazel. Callum's voice snaps me back to the present. You okay, love? You seem a million miles away. I plaster on another fake smile. Just tired. It's been a long night. Edgar pats my shoulder. Why don't you go home and rest? I'll stay with Callum for a while. I nod, grateful for the escape. As I turn to leave, Callum calls out. I love you, Hazel. Thank you for being here. The words twist in my gut like a knife. I manage a weak, love you too, before fleeing the room. In the hallway, I lean against the wall, struggling to breathe. How did we get here? How did the life I thought was so perfect turn out to be built on lies? I think back to when Callum and I first met. I was fresh out of a painful breakup, and he swept me off my feet with his charm and promises of stability. The Monroes welcomed me with open arms, and for the first time in my life, I felt like I belong somewhere. But now, I see the cracks in the facade. Miriam's constant criticism, masked as concern. Callum's growing distance. The pressure to have children. To be the perfect Monroe wife. As I make my way to the parking lot, my phone buzzes. It's a text from Lydia, my best friend. How are you holding up? Want me to come over? I type back a quick, yes, please, before getting into my car. As I sit there, key in the ignition, I realize I'm at a crossroads. I can pretend everything's fine, keep playing the role of the dutiful wife, or I can face the truth and fight for the life I deserve. The engine roars to life, and with it, a new determination fills me. I may not know what the future holds, but I know one thing for certain. I'm done living a lie. I step into the Monroe household, the air thick with tension. Miriam's critical gaze follows me as I move through the living room, her lips pursed in disapproval. Hazel, dear, she calls her voice, syrupy sweet. Come sit with me. We need to talk about Callum's recovery and other matters. I steel myself, 
sinking into the plush armchair across from her. What other matters, Miriam? She leans forward, eyes narrowing. You know what I'm talking about. It's been five years, Hazel. When are you going to give this family an heir? The familiar ache blooms in my chest. Miriam, we've been over this. Callum and I. Are you even trying? She interrupts. Maybe if you put as much effort into starting a family as you do into your little hobbies, we'd have grandchildren by now. I bite my tongue, remembering the countless doctor's appointments, the treatments, the disappointments. Callum had been supportive at first, but lately, we're doing our best. I manage my voice tight. Miriam scoffs. Your best clearly isn't good enough. Do you know what people are saying? That you're too selfish to have children. That you're holding Callum back. Her words cut deep, reopening old wounds. I stand abruptly, needing to escape. I should check on Callum. The doctor said he needs rest. As I hurry up the stairs, I hear Miriam mutter, useless girl. I told Callum he should have married someone else. I pause outside Callum's room, taking a deep breath to compose myself. When I enter, he's propped up in bed, scrolling through his phone. He barely glances up as I approach. How are you feeling? I ask, perching on the edge of the bed. He shrugs, wincing slightly. Been better. Did you bring my work laptop? I need to send some emails. I frown. Callum, you're supposed to be resting, the doctor said. I know what the doctor said, he snaps. But I can't afford to fall behind at work. Not now. The irritation in his voice surprises me. What do you mean? Not now. He hesitates, then sighs. There's a big promotion coming up. I'm in the running, but it's not guaranteed. I need to stay on top of things. I nod slowly, a knot forming in my stomach. Is this why he's been working so late? Or is it just another lie? I'll get your laptop, I say quietly, standing to leave. As I reach the door, Callum calls out, Hazel, I'm sorry. I know things have been difficult lately. Once this promotion comes through, everything will be better. I promise. I force a smile, not trusting myself to speak. As I close the door behind me, I wonder how many more promises he'll make and break. Downstairs, I find Edgar in the study, poring over a stack of papers. He looks up as I enter, his kind eyes crinkling at the corners. Hazel, my dear, how are you holding up? I sink into the chair across from him, suddenly exhausted. I'm managing. Edgar nods, understanding in his gaze. Miriam giving you a hard time again? I shrug, not wanting to cause more family drama. But Edgar sees right through me. Don't let her get to you, he says gently. Miriam, she means well in her own way, but she forgets that not everyone shares her priorities. I look at him, surprised by his candor. Edgar has always been the quiet one, rarely speaking against his wife. What about you, Edgar? I ask. What are your priorities? He's silent for a moment, his weathered hands fidgeting with a pen. Peace, he says finally. A quiet life, free from all this chaos. Something in his tone makes me wonder if he's as trapped in this family as I feel. Before I can respond, Miriam's voice rings out from the hallway. Edgar, where's that financial report? The bank's calling again. Edgar sighs, the weariness evident on his face. Duty calls, he murmurs, gathering his papers. As he leaves, I'm struck by the realization that perhaps I'm not the only one suffocating under the weight of Monroe family expectations. Later that evening, as I'm preparing dinner, my phone buzzes. It's a text from Lydia. Hey girl, how are you holding up? Drinks tomorrow night. I smile, grateful for the lifeline my best friend is offering. God, yes. I need to get out of this house. As I set the table for dinner, my mind wanders to the future. How long can I keep living like this? Pretending everything's fine when I'm drowning in doubt and resentment? Miriam sweeps into the dining room, eyeing the table critically. Only four place settings? I told you my sister's coming for dinner. I freeze, panic rising. I'm sorry, I forgot. I'll add another. Honestly, Hazel, Miriam interrupts, exasperation dripping from every word. How do you expect to manage a household if you can't even remember a simple dinner guest? As she bustles around, 
Fixing my table settings, I feel something inside me snap. The facade I've been maintaining starts to crumble. I may not know what the future holds, but I know one thing for certain. Something has to change. And soon. I stand in our bedroom, Callum's phone clutched in my trembling hand. The house is quiet, everyone else asleep. But my world is imploding. Can't wait to see you tomorrow, baby. Last night was amazing. Fiona. The words blur as tears fill my eyes. I scroll through the messages, each one a dagger to my heart. Photos, intimate conversations, plans for secret rendezvous. It's all there, laid bare and cold, unforgiving pixels. I sink onto the bed, our bed, where just days ago, I thought we were happy. How long has this been going on? How many nights did he lie next to me, thinking of her? A soft ping breaks the silence. Another message from Fiona. Hope your wife bought the working late excuse again. You really should leave her already. Rage surges through me, hot and fierce. I want to scream, to break things, to confront Callum right now. But a cold, calculating voice in my head tells me to wait. To plan. I take a deep breath, forcing myself to think clearly. Who is this Fiona? The name sounds vaguely familiar. I open Callum's contact list, scrolling until I find her. Fiona Blake, of course, the new junior executive at his firm, the one he couldn't stop talking about when she first started. My fingers hover over her number. Should I call her? Confront her? No, not yet. I need more information. I spend the next hour combing through Callum's phone, taking screenshots, forwarding emails to myself. By the time I'm done, I have a complete picture of their affair. Three months. It's been going on for three months. As dawn breaks, I slip back into bed, my mind racing. Callum stirs beside me, reaching out in his sleep. I recoil from his touch, disgust replacing the love I once felt. Hazel, he mumbles, eyes still closed. You okay? I swallow hard, forcing my voice to remain steady. Fine. Just couldn't sleep. He nods, already drifting back to sleep. I watch him, this stranger I've shared my life with, and make a decision. I won't confront him. Not yet. First, I need a plan. The next morning, I go through the motions of our normal routine. I make breakfast, help Callum with his tie, kiss him goodbye as he leaves for work. But inside, I'm seething. As soon as he's gone, I call Lydia. I need to see you. I say, my voice cracking. It's important. An hour later, we're sitting in a quiet corner of our favorite cafe. Lydia listens in shocked silence as I spill everything. That bastard, she hisses when I finish. I'll kill him. I shake my head. No. I need to handle this myself, but I don't know how. Lydia takes my hand, her eyes fierce with loyalty. Whatever you need, I'm here. But Hazel, you can't stay with him. You know that, right? I nod the reality of my situation sinking in. I know. But it's not just about leaving Callum. It's about leaving the Monroes. They'll try to destroy me if I walk away. Then we destroy them first, Lydia says, a determined glint in her eye. You've got evidence, right? Use it. We spend the next few hours plotting. By the time we part, I have a plan. It's risky, potentially devastating, but it's the only way I can see to free myself from the Monroes' grip. That evening, I return home to find Miriam in the kitchen, preparing dinner. She looks up as I enter, her usual critical expression in place. There you are, she says. I was beginning to think you'd abandoned your duties for the day. I force a smile, just catching up with a friend. Can I help with dinner? Miriam waves me away. I've got it under control. Heaven knows what state the meal would be in if I left it to you. I bite back a retort, reminding myself that soon, I won't have to endure this anymore. As I turn to leave, Miriam calls out. Oh, Hazel? Callum called. He's working late again tonight. Don't wait up. The lie slides so easily from her lips. Does she know? Is she covering for him? Thanks for letting me know. I manage my voice tight. I retreat to our bedroom, locking the door behind me. Pulling out my phone, I dial the number I found in Callum's contacts. It rings twice before a young, breathy voice answers. Hello. Is this Fiona Blake? 
I ask, my heart pounding. Yes, who's this? I take a deep breath. This is Hazel Monroe, Callum's wife. There's a long pause, then a sharp intake of breath. Oh, God. Listen, I can explain. Save it. I cut her off. I know everything. I've seen the messages, the photos. I know about your little affair. Please, Fiona pleads, her voice trembling. It's not what you think. Callum said he was leaving you. I laugh bitterly. Of course he did. And I'm sure you believed him, didn't you? Just like I believed him when he said he was working late. Fiona starts to speak again, but I interrupt. I'm not calling to hear your excuses. I'm calling to give you a warning. This ends now. Or I go public with everything. Your career, your reputation, it'll all be over. Do you understand? There's a long silence, then a quiet. Yes, I understand. I'm so sorry, Hazel. I never meant. I hang up, cutting off her apology. My hands are shaking, but I feel a surge of power. For the first time in years, I'm taking control of my life. As I stare out the window, watching the sun set on another day in this gilded cage, I make a vow to myself. This is just the beginning. By the time I'm done, the Monroes will wish they'd never met me. I stride into Callum's hospital room, my heart pounding but my resolve unwavering. Miriam sits by his bedside, fussing over his pillows. They both look up as I enter, their smiles fading at the sight of my grim expression. Hazel, Callum asks, concern creeping into his voice. What's wrong? I take a deep breath, stealing myself. I think it's time we had a talk. All of us. Miriam stands, her eyes narrowing. What's this about? I pull out my phone, my fingers trembling slightly as I pull up the incriminating messages. It's about the truth, Miriam. The truth Callum's been hiding from all of us. Callum's face pales. Hazel, wait. But I'm done waiting. I turn the phone screen towards them, watching as Miriam's eyes widen in shock and Callum's face crumples in guilt. Three months, I say, my voice surprisingly steady. Three months you've been lying to me, sneaking around with Fiona Blake. Miriam gasps, her hand flying to her mouth. Callum, tell me this isn't true. Callum looks between us, panic clear in his eyes. I can explain. Explain what? I cut him off. How you've been making a fool of me. How you've been risking everything we've built for some office fling. It's not like that, he pleads. Fiona, she, she understands me. She doesn't pressure me like, like I do. I finish for him, anger flaring. Because I want a family? Because I expect you to be a partner, not just a provider. Miriam, recovering from her initial shock, steps forward. Now, Hazel, let's not be hasty. I'm sure this is all just a misunderstanding. I turn to her, disbelief coloring my voice. A misunderstanding? Did you not see the messages, Miriam? The photos. These things happen in marriages, she says, her tone placating. The important thing is to work through them, for the sake of the family. Her words ignite something in me, a fury I've been suppressing for years. The family? You mean your precious Monroe legacy? That's all you care about, isn't it? Not my happiness, not even Callum's. Just your reputation. Callum tries to sit up, wincing in pain. Hazel, please. We can work this out. I'll end things with Fiona, I promise. I laugh, a hollow sound that echoes in the sterile room. End things? I already took care of that. I called her Callum, told her everything. His face drains of color. You what? That's right, I say, a grim satisfaction settling over me. It's over. All of it. Miriam steps towards me, her eyes flashing with anger. Now you listen here, young lady. You can't just throw away everything we've given you over one little indiscretion. I stand my ground, meeting her gaze. Given me? What exactly have you given me, Miriam? Criticism? Pressure? The constant feeling that I'm not good enough. We gave you a family, she hisses. A place to belong. Or have you forgotten where you came from? Her words hit home, but instead of cowing me, they fuel my determination. I haven't forgotten, but I'm not that scared, lonely girl anymore. I don't need your approval or your family name. 
I turned to Callum, who's watching me with a mixture of fear and awe. I loved you, I say, my voice softening slightly. I really did, but I can't do this anymore. I won't live a lie. Hazel, please, he begs. Give me another chance. I'll do better, I swear. For a moment, I waver. The life we've built, the dreams we've shared, can I really walk away from all of it? But then I remember the messages, the lies, the years of feeling inadequate. No, I say firmly, I deserve better than this, better than both of you. I turn to leave, but Miriam grabs my arm. You can't just walk away, she snarls. You're nothing without us. You'll come crawling back, you'll see. I wrench my arm free, a surge of strength coursing through me. Watch me, I say my voice low and dangerous. As I walk out of the room, out of the hospital, I feel a weight lifting from my shoulders. The future stretches before me, uncertain but full of possibility. Outside, I take a deep breath of fresh air. My phone buzzes a text from Lydia. How did it go? Need backup. I smile, feeling truly free for the first time in years. It's done, I type back. Meet me for drink? I think it's time to celebrate. As I wait for a reply, I look back at the hospital. The Monroes thought they owned me, that they could control my life. But they were wrong. This isn't an ending. It's a beginning. My beginning. And I'm ready to write my own story, on my own terms. I stand in the foyer of the Monroe family home, my suitcase packed and waiting by the door. The house feels different now, its grandeur tainted by the secrets, and lies it has harbored. Miriam's voice echoes from the living room, sharp and insistent. Hazel, we need to talk. Now. I take a deep breath, steeling myself for the confrontation I know is coming. As I enter the living room, I'm met with Miriam's icy glare. Callum sits on the couch, his head in his hands, while Edgar stands by the window, his expression unreadable. Sit down, Miriam commands, gesturing to an armchair. I remain standing. I'd rather not. I won't be staying long. Miriam's eyes narrow. Don't be ridiculous. You're not going anywhere. I've made my decision, Miriam, I say, my voice steady despite the trembling in my hands. I'm leaving. Callum looks up, his eyes red-rimmed. Hazel, please. We can work this out. I'll do anything. I turn to him feeling a mixture of pity and disgust. It's too late for that, Callum. You made your choice. Miriam stands, her voice rising. Now you listen here, young lady. You have no idea what you're throwing away. The Monroe name means something in this town. Without us, you're nothing. Her words hit me like a physical blow, but I stand my ground. I'd rather be nothing than live another day in this house of lies. Lies? Miriam scoffs. We gave you everything, a home, a family, a purpose, and this is how you repay us. I laugh, a bitter sound that surprises even me. A purpose? You mean being your personal punching bag? Living up to your impossible standards? Don't be so dramatic, Miriam snaps. Everything I've done has been for this family, for you and Callum. No, I say, my voice low and dangerous. Everything you've done has been for yourself. To maintain your precious control. Miriam's face contorts with rage. She steps towards me, her hand raised as if to strike. You ungrateful little. That's enough, Miriam. We all turn in shock. Edgar has stepped away from the window, his usually quiet voice firm and commanding. Edgar? Miriam gasps. What are you doing? He moves to stand beside me, his presence a surprising comfort. I'm doing what I should have done years ago, standing up to you. Miriam's mouth opens and closes, no sound coming out. Callum looks between his parents, confusion written across his face. Edgar turns to me, his eyes kind. Hazel, I'm sorry. I should have spoken up sooner. The way Miriam has treated you, it's not right. I feel tears pricking at my eyes, touched by this unexpected support. Thank you, Edgar. Miriam seems to recover her voice. Edgar, have you lost your mind? She's tearing this family apart. Edgar shakes his head sadly. No, Miriam. 
You've been doing that for years. With your criticism, your manipulation, your obsession with appearances. I've watched you crush the spirit out of everyone in this house, including our son. Callum flinches at his father's words, a look of dawning realization on his face. Miriam's voice turns pleading. Edgar, please. Everything I've done has been for us. For our legacy. Legacy. Edgar scoffs. What legacy? A family built on lies and fear? That's not a legacy, Miriam. That's a prison. He turns to me again. Hazel, you don't have to leave. This is your home, too. If anyone should go, it's... No. I interrupt gently. Thank you, Edgar. But I need to do this. For myself. He nods, understanding in his eyes. Then at least let me help you. Financially, I mean, to get you started. Miriam gasps. Edgar, you can't be serious. I'm tempted by his offer, but I shake my head. I appreciate it, but I need to do this on my own. Clean break. Edgar nods, respect clear in his expression. I understand, but if you ever need anything, thank you, I say meaning it. I turn to leave, but Callum's voice stops me. Hazel, wait. I, I'm sorry. For everything. I look at him, seeing for the first time the scared little boy beneath the polished exterior. I know, Callum, but sorry isn't enough. Not this time. As I pick up my suitcase and walk out the door, I hear Miriam's voice, shrill and panicked. Hazel, Hazel, come back here. We're not finished, but we are. As I step into the sunlight, I feel a weight lifting from my shoulders. The road ahead is uncertain, but for the first time in years, I feel truly free. My phone buzzes. It's a text from Lydia. All set at my place. You ready for your new life, Rumi? I smile, feeling a surge of hope. On my way, I type back. And Lydia? Thank you. For everything. As I drive away from the Monroe estate, I catch a glimpse of Edgar in the rearview mirror. He's standing on the porch, watching me go. I raise a hand in farewell, and he nods, a small smile on his face. The future is uncertain, but I'm ready to face it. On my own terms, with my head held high. The Monroes thought they owned me, but they were wrong. My story is just beginning, and this time, I'm the one holding the pen. I stand in the middle of my new apartment, surrounded by half-unpacked boxes and the promise of a fresh start. Lydia bustles around, arranging throw pillows and chattering about paint colors. Her enthusiasm is infectious, and I find myself smiling despite the whirlwind of emotions churning inside me. Earth to Hazel, Lydia says, waving a hand in front of my face. Where'd you go just now? I shake my head, forcing myself back to the present. Sorry, just processing, I guess. Lydia's face softens. Hey, it's okay. You've been through hell. It's gonna take time. Before I can respond, my phone buzzes. It's a text from Edgar. Thought you should know. The story's out. Callum's affair is public. My heart races as I show Lydia the message. She whistles low. Damn. How do you feel about that? I sink onto the couch, my legs suddenly weak. I, I don't know. Relieved? Angry? Sad? All of the above. Lydia sits beside me, her hand on my shoulder. All valid. Want to see what people are saying? Part of me wants to hide from it all, but a stronger part needs to know. I nod, and Lydia pulls out her tablet, quickly pulling up local news sites and social media. The headlines are brutal. Monroe air and sex scandal. Callum Monroe's secret affair exposed. Monroe family in turmoil. As we scroll through comments and reactions, my phone rings. It's Callum. I stare at the screen, torn between answering and throwing the phone across the room. You don't have to talk to him, Lydia says gently. I take a deep breath and answer. What do you want, Callum? His voice is ragged, desperate. Hazel, please. I need you. Everything's falling apart. The firm is talking about letting me go. My friends won't return my calls and mother. She's beside herself. A part of me aches for him, but I push it down. I'm sorry you're struggling, Callum, but that's not my problem anymore. How can you say that, he pleads. After everything we've been through? Anger flares in me. Everything we've been through? 
You mean how you lied to me? Cheated on me? Made me feel like I was never good enough. I made a mistake, he cries. I'll do anything to make it right. Please, just come home. I close my eyes, stealing myself. No, Callum. That's not my home anymore. You made your choices. Now you have to live with them. I hang up, my hand shaking. Lydia wraps me in a hug, and I let myself cry for the first time since leaving the Monroe house. As evening falls, there's a knock at the door. Lydia and I exchange wary glances. She peers through the peephole and gasps. It's Edgar. I open the door to find Edgar standing there, looking tired but determined. May I come in? I nod, stepping aside. He enters, taking in the modest apartment with a small smile. It suits you, he says. What are you doing here, Edgar? I ask, curious but cautious. He sighs, sinking into an armchair. I left Miriam. Lydia and I exchange shocked looks. What? I breathe. Edgar nods, a mix of sadness and relief on his face. After you left, things escalated. Miriam was beside herself, alternating between rage and despair. When the news of Callum's affair broke, she, well, she lost it. Started talking about using the family's influence to bury the story, to ruin Fiona's life. I feel a chill run down my spine. She wouldn't. She would, Edgar says grimly. That was the last straw for me. I couldn't stand by and watch her destroy more lives in the name of preserving the family's reputation. I sink onto the couch, stunned. I'm so sorry, Edgar. I never meant to cause all this chaos. He leans forward, his eyes intense. No, Hazel, you didn't cause this. You just had the courage to expose what was already there, the rot at the heart of the Monroe family. Lydia, who's been uncharacteristically quiet, speaks up. So what happens now? Edgar runs a hand through his hair. I don't know. Miriam's threatening to contest the divorce, to cut me off from the family fortune. But honestly, I don't care. I'm tired of living under her thumb. I feel a surge of admiration for this man. I thought I knew. What can we do to help? He smiles, a genuine warmth in his eyes. You've done more than enough, Hazel. You showed me it was possible to stand up to Miriam, to choose integrity over appearances. Now it's my turn to figure out who I am without the Monroe name defining me. As Edgar prepares to leave, he turns to me one last time. Hazel, I want you to know, I'm proud of you, and I'm sorry I didn't stand up for you sooner. Tears prick my eyes as I hug him. Thank you, Edgar, for everything. After he's gone, Lydia and I sit in stunned silence. Finally, she turns to me, a mischievous glint in her eye. Well, looks like karma's working overtime for the Monroes. I can't help but laugh, feeling lighter than I have in years. As we return to unpacking, I realize that this apartment, this new life, isn't just a fresh start. It's a victory. I've reclaimed my life from the Monroe's grip, and for the first time in years, the future looks bright. I stand outside the Monroe family's country club, my heart pounding. It's been two months since I left, but it feels like a lifetime. Lydia squeezes my hand, reassuringly. You sure you want to do this? She asks. I nod, stealing myself. I need closure. And answers. We push through the ornate doors into a world I once thought was mine. The annual Monroe Family Charity Gala is in full swing, the air thick with perfume, champagne, and pretense. Heads turn as we enter. I hear whispers, see pointing fingers. The scandal may have died down in the press, but here, in the heart of Monroe territory, it's still fresh. I spot Callum across the room, looking haggard and alone. Our eyes meet, and he starts towards me, but Edgar intercepts him, shaking his head. I silently thank him for the intervention. Hazel. I turn to find Fiona Blake standing behind me, her face a mask of nervousness and guilt. Can we talk? Privately, she asks, her voice barely above a whisper. Curiosity overrides my initial instinct to refuse. I nod, following her to a quiet corner of the terrace. Fiona wrings her hands, avoiding my gaze. I owe you an apology and an explanation. I cross my arms, waiting.
She takes a deep breath. The affair with Callum. It wasn't what you think. I mean, yes, it happened, but it wasn't my idea. I frown. Confusion replacing anger. What do you mean? Fiona's eyes dart around, as if checking for eavesdroppers. Miriam approached me six months ago. She, she said Callum was thinking of leaving you, that he was unhappy. She wanted me to distract him, keep him in the family. The world seems to tilt on its axis. Miriam, set this up? Fiona nods miserably. She said it was for the good of the family, that Callum needed someone who understood the pressures of his position, someone who could give him children. The old pain flares, but it's overshadowed by a growing rage. And you agree to this? I'm not proud of it, Fiona says, her voice cracking. But Miriam promised to fast-track my career, to make me a partner in the firm. I thought, I thought I could handle it, that it was just business. But then, you fell for him. I finish, the pieces falling into place. She nods, tears spilling down her cheeks. I'm so sorry, Hazel. I never meant to hurt you. And when I realized how manipulative Miriam was, how she was using all of us, I couldn't be part of it anymore. I stand there, stunned. The betrayal I thought I understood has taken on a new, more insidious form. Miriam's machinations run deeper than I ever imagined. Why are you telling me this now? I ask. Fiona wipes her eyes. Because you deserve the truth. And because I'm leaving. I can't stay here, can't be part of this toxic world anymore. I thought you should know before I go. As she turns to leave, I catch her arm. Fiona, thank you for telling me. She gives me a sad smile and disappears into the crowd. I make my way back to Lydia, my mind reeling. But before I can reach her, Miriam appears, blocking my path. Well, well. The prodigal daughter-in-law returns, she sneers. Come to beg forgiveness? I look at her, really look at her, and for the first time, I see the fear behind her bravado. The desperation to maintain control. No, Miriam. I say calmly. I came for the truth. And I got it. Her eyes narrow. What are you talking about? I know what you did. I say, my voice low but firm. How you orchestrated Callum's affair. How you've been manipulating all of us. Miriam's face pales, but she quickly recovers. Don't be ridiculous. You're just trying to shift blame for your failed marriage. Am I? I challenge. Shall we ask Fiona? Or Callum? I wonder what they'd say if questioned about your little scheme. Fear flashes in her eyes, quickly replaced by anger. You ungrateful little. That's enough, Miriam. We both turn to find Edgar standing there, his face set in grim determination. Edgar, don't interfere, Miriam hisses. But Edgar shakes his head. No more, Miriam. No more lies. No more manipulation. It's over. The room has gone quiet, all eyes on our little drama. Callum approaches, confusion written across his face. Mother, what's going on? I look at Callum, seeing him clearly for the first time in years. Not the charming facade or the lying cheat, but a man caught in a web not entirely of his own making. In that moment, I'm faced with a choice. I could expose Miriam's schemes, bring the whole Monroe Empire crashing down. Part of me wants to, craves that vengeance. But as I look around at the shocked faces, at Edgar's quiet strength and Callum's dawning realization, I understand a fundamental truth. Revenge won't heal me. It won't undo the pain or restore what I've lost. I turn to Miriam, my voice steady. It's over. Your game's your control. It ends now. Not because I'm exposing you, but because I'm walking away. For good this time. I see the shock in her eyes, the disbelief that I'm not playing by her rules. As I walk away, head held high, I feel a weight lifting. The future is uncertain, but for the first time in years, it's mine to shape. Lydia falls into step beside me as we exit the club. You okay? She asks softly. I take a deep breath of the cool night air. No, I admit, but I will be. I stand in front of the mirror, adjusting my blazer and taking a deep breath. It's been a year since I walked away from the Monroes, and today marks another milestone in my journey. You ready for this? 
Lydia asks, poking her head into my room. I nod, a mix of nervousness and excitement bubbling in my chest. As ready as I'll ever be. We make our way to the community college, where I'm about to sit for my final exam to become a certified public accountant. The campus is buzzing with energy, students rushing to and fro. I feel a sense of belonging here that I never experienced in the Monroe world. As we approach the exam hall, I spot a familiar figure waiting outside. Edgar, what are you doing here? I ask, surprised but pleased to see him. He smiles warmly. I couldn't miss this. I'm so proud of you, Hazel. Tears prick my eyes as I hug him. Thank you, Edgar. For everything. He pats my back. You did this all on your own. Now go show them what you're made of. With one last deep breath, I enter the exam hall. Three hours later, I emerge, exhausted but confident. Lydia and Edgar are waiting, and we celebrate with lunch at a nearby cafe. As we're finishing our meal, my phone buzzes. It's an email from the accounting firm where I interned. I open it with trembling fingers and read aloud. Dear MS, Monroe, we are pleased to offer you a full-time position as a junior accountant. Lydia squeals with delight, and Edgar beams with pride. But it's the next line that catches in my throat. We were particularly impressed by your resilience and determination in rebuilding your life. Your journey is an inspiration. I look up at my friends, overwhelmed. They know. About everything. Edgar nods. I may have put in a good word. But Hazel, this offer is all you. You earned it. As the reality sinks in, I feel a weight I didn't even know I was carrying lift from my shoulders. I've done it. I've rebuilt my life on my own terms. Later that evening, as I'm packing up my study materials, there's a knock at the door. I open it to find Callum standing there, looking nervous. Hazel, he says softly. Can we talk? Part of me wants to slam the door, but I see something in his eyes that gives me pause. I step aside, letting him in. We sit in awkward silence for a moment before he speaks. I heard about your job offer. Congratulations. Thank you. I reply, wary but curious. How did you hear? He shifts uncomfortably. Edgar told me. We've been. Talking. Trying to sort things out. I raise an eyebrow, surprised. And Miriam? Callum sighs. She's struggling. The divorce hit her hard, but I think it's for the best. For all of us. I nod, unsure what to say. Callum leans forward, his eyes earnest. Hazel, I know I have no right to ask this, but can you ever forgive me? The question hangs in the air between us. A year ago, I would have lashed out, held on to my anger like a shield. But now, looking at Callum, I see not the man who betrayed me, but a flawed human being trying to find his way. I don't know, I answer honestly, but I'm working on it. Not for you, but for me. Holding on to anger and resentment. It only hurts me in the end. Callum nods, understanding. You've changed, he says softly. You seem stronger, happier. I smile, realizing the truth in his words. I am. For the first time in a long time, I know who I am, what I want. As Callum prepares to leave, he pauses at the door. I'm sorry, Hazel, for everything. I hope, I hope you find the happiness you deserve. After he's gone, I sit in the quiet of my apartment, reflecting on the journey that brought me here. The pain, the betrayal, the struggle to find myself again, but also the growth, the friendships deepened, the strength I never knew I had. My phone buzzes with a text from Lydia. Drinks to celebrate the new job? The gang's all waiting. I smile, grabbing my keys. As I lock up, I catch my reflection in the hallway mirror. The woman looking back at me is not the same one who left the Monroe house a year ago. She's stronger, wiser, and finally, truly free. Stepping out into the warm evening air, I feel a sense of possibility I haven't experienced in years. The future stretches before me, full of promise and potential. I don't know exactly what it holds, but for the first time, I'm excited to find out. As I join my friends at our favorite bar, raising a glass to new beginnings, I realize that this, this moment, these people, this life I've built, this is my happy ending. 
Not because it's perfect or because all the wounds have healed, but because it's real, it's mine, and I've earned every bit of it. The journey isn't over. There will be more challenges, more growth, more life to live. But as I look around at the smiling faces of the people who stood by me through it all, I know one thing for certain. Whatever comes next, I'm ready for it. Because I am Hazel Monroe, and this is my story. And it's only just beginning.